Uh, hi, I, uh, first, I want to introduce some form of the optimization problem. The first uh, uh, and the simplest optimization problem is the unconstrained problem. Just we have uh, one function and uh, no constraints. Uh, in this case, we can uh, uh, the necessary necessary condition for optimal solution is just the the reading of the f x is equal to zero. This is this is the first order necessary condition, and uh, if we can get the, we can directly solve this function is we can get the optimal solution. If we cannot directly solve this, we can use the, some gradient descent method to solve it. This is the case one. For case two, we have the objective functions. Meanwhile, we also have the inequality, equality constraints. Ah, uh, sorry. Here we can see. Which means we have here we have the m um, uh, m equalities. In this case, we can construct we can construct the Lagrangian functions uh, with the Lagrangian multipliers. Uh, here the Lagrangian Around this function is a function with respect uh, with respect to the variable of x, and also the Lagrangian multipliers lambda here. X and lambda is both are both the vectors. Here we can construct the Lagrangian function like this. So the um, the necessary condition for the optimal solution is that we should uh, make the derivative of this Lagrangian function is equal to zero because we have the two set of variables. So if we take the uh, derivative respect to the with respect to the s, we will get it's equal to the derivative of the fx minus uh, lambda i times the derivative of the i's, uh, i's um, equality constraints. We want to make sure this is equal to zero. And we also need to make the derivative with respect to the lambda is also equal to should also equal to our lambda. Here for the i's the lambda i the derivative is equal to the negative j i s. We also want it to be equal to zero. So here, this is the uh, uh, necessary optimal solution, uh, op optimal condition for the uh, for the Lagrangian functions. Here we can see that the negative j i is equal to zero is corresponding to the equality constraints. So um, I will introduce a new, uh, very simple example, is a very simple example to show why we can construct these Lagrangian functions. Uh, for example, yeah. 
Um, are we assuming x is a scalar for now, or is x this is all a vector? Oh, okay, it's all the uh, original variables we want to optimize. Okay. And here, the variables is s, and we also add uh, large multipliers as another variables. Let's consider a very simple example just with one um, equality constraints. We want to minimize s1 plus s2 subject to the S1 square plus S2 square equal to 2. So here, uh, if we draw a picture for this, this is S1, this is S2. The constraints is just a circle with the radius is equal to square, square, uh, square 2. And uh, um, here we just have one. The one equality constraints we can write here like this: two s one plus s two two equal to zero. If we take the derivative of this uh, constraints. We will get this equal to um, two S one and two S two. So that means for the derivative, for example, if we have this um, this visible points, the derivative of the uh, constraints is point two here. If we have this constraints, the derivative will point to there. And for the this objective function, we also have the we have also as a derivative is equal to one one. So that means for all the Uh, for all the uh, constraints here, for all the the points, if we have a points here, and we want to take the derivative of the objective functions, we can see it's uh, because it's y one is point to there. For all the points in this uh, the derivative of the objective function will point to the one one direction. Because gradient depth is the constant vector. Yeah, yeah. And can you spin in the other uh, arrows that you drew that had to do with the derivative of the g function? Okay, so for the g function, is a 2s1, 2s2. So for here, is a, for example, is a, the point here, like the, is a, For example, the point here is S1, S2. This is, is a vector S1, S2. The, de uh, the derivative of the GS is 2S1, 2S2. That means this we have the derivative on this point is the same direction on this. Oh, as the vector itself. Yeah, as a vector. So that's the, the, the different lengths. Yeah, okay. So the direction, we just hear about the direction. So here is that. Here is uh, the direction of the orientation. The the, uh, the direction of orientation of the constraints is goes to this direction. 
So that means for every point in this circle, it's uh, just uh, the direction uh, like the, to the orange orange to the that point. So this point we direct uh, here. So that means from this Lagrangian functions, uh, we know that if we want to make sure the derivative with respect to the s equal to zero, that means the derivative of this objective functions. And uh, is, uh, in this case, we just have one um, equality constraint. That means the derivative of fs, the direction of the f prime s should be the parallel to the direction of the j prime s. And, and that's because there's one gradient, f there's, there's one g function, so we yeah, have yeah, grad we f equals lambda grad g? Yeah, okay. that means we here we should have the f s equal to some uh, whole inefficient In this case, we have these two. So that means only in this case we have not, um, because we want to minimize this objective function, we just want to move the points between on these circles. So, and. Uh, We know that on these points, we have not how the derivative of the orient of the uh, the derivative of the function objective function is point to this, and the and the uh, the direction of the derivative of the constraints is point to the opposite uh, direction. That means we have not to move this point to make the. Uh, the objective value smaller, and here we have also here we if the um, derivative of the objective function is same, it's the same uh, direction with the uh, uh, gradient of the constraint. With um, that means here we have also not uh, or we can here it's just a, a it's also a optimal. Uh, stationary points, but it's not the. We have these two stationary points, but if we compile these two points, we know that this is uh, okay. This is the uh, um, optimal solution. So because the uh, um, this is just the necessary condition, it's not the sufficient condition. So that means. If we want to have the is that to say the Lagrangian conditions you written on the left those are necessary but not can, not sufficient? Um, it's necessary for all the problems, right. but for the some homeless problems maybe it's the sufficient. Okay, cool. So that means if we want uh, the necessary condition we can write with is like this. So that means f s minus j to zero. Because we want to make sure this is uh, equal to zero, so that's why we construct this long around the functions like this. Then we, if we construct a uh, long around the function like this, we can make the derivative with respect uh, the function with respect to the s and the Lagrangian multipliers to make it zero. Therefore, we can convert this uh, equality constraint problem to some uh, to just uh, to find the to the problem just finding the zero points of these functions. So 
So this is for the quality constraints. But for the more complex um, problems, we also have the inequality constraints. Also constructed the constraints, uh, the Lagrangian functions like this. For the inequality uh, constraints, we have constructed the uh, the multipliers the same way. For the um, inequality constraints, we can also add the long range multipliers. So here, we will um, derive the HAT condition to make to have the necessary condition for the optimal solution. KT condition. As the same here, we want to make sure the derivative with, uh, with respect to the S equal to zero. So here is the first condition. How to the derivative of the objective functions. For the this for the equality constraints, this part is for the inequality constraints. We want is equal to zero. And here for the um, long range multipliers with, with respect to the inequality um, with respect to the inequality constraints, we also want to make sure this is equal to zero. So here we have the with respect to the i equal to the negative of j i s how to zero. Here we can do mode. And the third condition is the new condition. We should make sure the U J H J S equal to zero for all j from one to p, and we we'll also make sure the u j is uh, not negative, and h j s should satisfy the constraints here. It's also not non-negative. 
So here, that means um, combine these two hun uh, condition with, which means if u i u j equal to zero. Then HJS can be any values uh, can be can, uh, can be the non not negative value. The case two is if HJ is equal to zero, then that means mu J should be the positive. No, no, right. Oh, yes. It should be the power two. Here we also use the same uh, the similar example to show these two uh, this these two conditions holds. Here we also want to minimize as one plus as two, but the constraints here we want we replace with the inequality constraints. That means the feasible site is a, is the inside of the the circle. So. For the case one, if we have the point here inside of the uh, the circle, that means let's say it's S1, S2. That means the S1, 2 minus S1 square and minus S2 square should be straight, straightly greater than the zero. And here we know the, di uh, the direction of the orientation is also toward to that direction. That means if we want to decrease the objective values, we can just have a very small step that is opposite, opposite to the direction of the gradient. That means we can make the uh, objective values decreasing. In this case, the we can always make the one step that updated to the direction of the gradient, unless the gradient of the objective values is equal to zero. That means if we have the S equal to zero, we will find a, a stationary point that may be the optimal solution. So here, if we know that, so in this case, uh, we do not need the, we do not need this part of. Uh, let's write the object, uh, the long range function for this example. Select. So one plus S two minus mu one. Yeah, if we just want to make sure the derivative of the uh, the objective value function is equal to zero, 
That means we do not need to this part of this in the long range functions. So in this case, the mu1 should be the zero. That means if the if the g1s is uh, positive, then the mu1 should be the zero for the optimal solutions. Should be zero. This is the his one. For his two, that means if j1 is equal to zero, the point is on the circle. If we also want to have a small step, G1s plus a small step like s to make the objective value smaller, then this should be. We also need to uh, satisfy the whole strength. And this is equal to the G1s. It's not equal, it's uh, approximately equal plus G1 the derivative of S times Do you mean, I missed this, uh, do you mean H instead of G since oh, H is the inequality constraint? Okay, just want to make sure I didn't miss. R is H. Because this is equal to zero, that means we should have the condition of H1 S and post S is greater than zero. And because we want to decrease the objective values. So that means we also have the f, the derivative of fs times s is equal to the, is the less than the zero. That means we should have the, have a step that uh, have the opposite direction to the gradient. That make sure we have the direct objective values, and uh, this may make sure that we also satisfy the constraints. So that means if we can we can have the one small step that satisfies these two conditions, then we can de uh, decrease the, the the objective value. But we if the we cannot uh, find a s that satisfies these two constraints. Uh, two conditions. That means it's uh, just stay in that point is a uh, stationary point. So from this, uh, from these two conditions, we find that when the step S is uh, we cannot find a step S as long as the the derivative each one, the derivative of each one is, is the same direction with the f1, the f prime s. That's the uh, same direction here, c. c should be equal to, is a positive. That means it's with the same direction. If they are in the same direction, this part is larger than and greater than zero, but this part we need to is less than zero. So that means it's an empty site. Because if we see, if we substitute each prime s 
is equal to C prime S. Then this is C F prime S. Okay. Is larger and or equal to zero. C is just a positive value. So that means we want the this is larger than zero. But this condition we want to make is less than zero. So that means it's uh, the S is not it uh, doesn't exist. So that means in this case, if H one X is equal to zero, the long range multiplier should be the greater than zero. So these two parts with corresponding to these conditions and uh, also satisfy this condition. So here it is the HT condition for this uh, with the general problem with the with the quality constraints and also with the inequality constraints. So to make sure that for the inequality constraints, the, the multipliers for corresponding to the inequality constraints is always no, non-negative. But for the multipliers corresponding to the inequality constraints, we, have, we don't have knowledge about how whether the lambda i should be negative or positive. It can be any values. Next, I will introduce the Lagrangian deal function. Or in short, we can just say it's the deal function. Deal function is a function whose variable is lambda and the mu is Lagrangian multipliers. It's equal to the infimum over the S of the Lagrangian function. So that means for all, any pair of the lambda and the mu, we want to have the minimum values over the, all the possible S. This is the dual function. This still function can um, provide a lower bound on the prime function. That means uh, for any lambda, and uh, any mu, how do we know here mu should be the not non-negative, and mu is greater or equal to zero. The d lambda mu is less than the f the s star is the optimal solution. That means the for any uh, lambda and any mu, mu is greater or equal to lambda. We cannot exceed the optimal solutions, optimal um, objective uh, values corresponding to the optimal solutions. And 
and here we also have the deal problem. That is, we want to maximize the deal function. We also have the constraints because the meal should be a return or equal to zero. So this is still problems. Um, if because we know here if the lambda and the mu is equal is the optimal solutions. We also know here we also is is less than or equal to the original optimal value. So that means if we let this is fx, this is fx star, this is the, this is the optimal values, and the deal function is like this. We know that for any lambda and uh, mu is a uh, return of equal to zero. The objective value should be is less than this value. And if we want to maximize this func deal function, for example, here is uh, lambda, mi lambda star mu star. We, are, we also know that this should be the, this point, the value here is the lambda star mu star. This point here is fs. So we also know that this value should be is smaller or equal to this value. If it's, um, this um, property is how the weight duality for the strong duality, that means the f for f x star is equal to the d lambda star and mu lambda star. So next, we want to introduce some examples that satisfies. Uh, in most cases, with the object uh, the optimization problems. The well studied optimization problem of the way should satisfy the strong duality problem. The first example is like the least resolution of linear equations. We want to minimize as transpose as subject to the A S equal to B. That means it is not uh, for right. We can have the multiple solutions, but we want to find the solution which have the the two norm is the, the minimum. Don't know how to solve this problem if we <laughs> so then First, let's construct the Lagrange function for this problem. We have the lambda s and multiply s equal to s transpose s. And then this, uh, should be the lambda transpose a s minus b.
then from here, we know the derivative with respect to the s should be the zero. Here we have the, this part is 2s. And uh, this part is the whole span to s. It should be the, a transpose lambda we want is to zero. Here we have this is lambda equal to half a transpose lambda. And the derivative with uh, the derivative of the long range function with, re with respect to the lambda is just the constraint. So we do not write this. But if we write the deal function for this problem, we have the d lambda And if we just uh, uh, substitute s here to this, uh, substitute s, this equation to this, we have the deal function looks like this. The deal problem is just to maximize this problem. Because there is no inequality constraints, so we do not have the constraints on lambda. So, and though it shows that this, uh, ob uh, this problem always uh, satisfies the strong, the strong duality. So that means we can maximize, just to maximize this unconstrained problem and get a lambda. If we get a lambda, we can add the optimal solution based on this part. So that means we, here we have the inequality constraint problems, but here we just uh, need to solve this unconstrained problem. Because unconstrained problem is uh, easier than the <laughs> constrained problem. So here we can just uh, maximize the d lambda. So we can use the unconstrained uh, methods such as uh, to make the derivative equal to zero or use the reading descent problems, uh, reading descent methods to find this solution. This. So that is one example on how we can use the long run function to make the problem, problem easier. And uh, Another uh, example is the uh, is the linear programming. Uh, the linear programming here we have make use of the HAT condition, like the interior point method. We do not solve the problem directly, but to make sure we have a central path solution that may we want to make the HAT or we want to for each. Step we want to make the solution towards to the HAT condition. So that at the end of the iteration, the HAT condition satisfied, then we add the solution. So here, let's write this. The linear program. The standard form is let's minimize the transpose x such that 
A, S is equal to B, and S is also larger or greater than zero. Then we have the equality constraints. We also have the inequality constraints. It's kind of hard to solve if we do not know the long rounded functions. So here we can write the long rounded function for this problem. Lambda S. And the mu to C transpose. Minus mu Ts. Um, and write like this lambda The dual function lambda and mu the inform of the around the function up to that is the inform inform over the S. Here we can write the lambda minus P here. And use the inform here. Other way, this is the inf inf uh, inform of these functions. If this part is not zero, we can make the s uh, as small as possible. That means it's the uh, the negative infinity. So that is not uh, it's not a bounded uh, inform. That means this part we have is equivalent to this lambda transpose. If the c minus d equal to zero, and uh, is equal to the negative infinity, otherwise. Um, aren't we re we're requiring x is greater than zero in this. So does that change? Does that potentially change with the infimum? I guess it depends on what uh, it is. This, yeah, it depends. It is and yeah, okay. lambda and mu is also variables that can right. make the. Okay. So if we want to the deal problem, the deal problem is just to maximize this part. Because this in this case is just a negative infinity. Mm -hmm. So if we want to maximize the problems, we that means we want to maximize here. Okay. Subject if we have this condition. Gotcha. Okay. So the deal problem is just to maximize lambda transpose B such that A transpose lambda Mu and mu is a uh, multiplier corresponding to the inequality constraints. So mu is also greater equal to zero. So this is a prime. This 
this is the prime problem form of the linear programming, then this is the dual form of the linear programming. And we all are also know that this problem is a strong, satisfies a strong duality. How do we know that? Uh, it's, it's true outside of the talk and we're importing <laughs> that, okay. Yeah. So this is Hanwhite's problem. So for most of the Hanwhite problem, we cannot say that it's always satisfied the, uh, the strong duality, but uh, most of the is, is, it is. And you called that the primal version of the problem. That's just, primal is just the version you see first, and then the dual is whatever you Make yeah, this uh, may be more intuitive, intuitive okay. but this is not that. Yeah, okay, yeah, I can see that. But uh, what I mean to ask is, there is nothing rigorous about the names primal and dual. Yeah, primal they just apply. The first thing that you see, and dual is the dual of the primal. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Like if this is primal, this is dual form of this part. This one. Okay. The primal and dual is just a pair. Mm -hmm. So the AT condition for this part is uh, like the lambda. We can hear that the derivative equal to zero is just the constraints for the dual form. So we also have the derivative to the lambda is negative a minus to zero. So this part is the constraints, inequality constraints for the prime form. And for the inequality, we know that we should have the ui si, mu rsi equal to zero and the mu i is greater than zero. S is also greater than zero. So this is the AT condition for the linear programming. So if we use the interior point method with the central path, that means here, instead of use this part, we want to make sure the u i s i is tall. So that means at each iteration, we want to find a tall, and we want to decrease the tall that satisfy both, both other conditions. Then we, if we decrease the tall equal to zero, then we will add the solution that satisfies the heating condition. So the interior point method that we do not directly solve the original problems, but we use the, uh, the property of the AT addition to solve it. So this is also uh, one example that we can use to make the long-ranging functions derive the dual, pro dual form of the original problems and the Write the AT condition, then we use the interior points to add the solution. Okay, so the, for the today, I think the time is almost gone. So for the today's talk, I introduced the long-ranging multipliers and how we construct the long-ranging functions. And for the in, uh, for the inequality constraints, we can just uh, as the, uh, the long-ranging multipliers that times the inequality constraints. But for the inequality constraints, the, the long-ranging multipliers it should be the not, not, not negative. And this is the AT condition right here. And then we also introduce the dual function and dual problems. Then we, I introduced two, prob, uh, two examples to show how we use this whole part of this is to solve the, to make the uh, optimization problem easier to solve. Okay. 
So that's all for my apologies. Ladies, you were here.